Alisson is well on the way to recovery. That's the latest word out of Liverpool. They haven't exactly said when he'll return to the starting eleven, But the goalkeeper is stepping up his procedures and training and getting the job done to heal that calf problem. Now, the problem is they've got Napoli to come up. The problem, the, is he's a, the problem is he's a big lad and that's a lot of tonnage going through those calves. <laughs> so <laughs> it know? takes an extra couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, he's a big old unit, isn't he? He's like huge. You wouldn't like to meet him in a dark alley, you know what I mean? Uh, and so the calves are... I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but obviously the calves are super important for every player, but for a goalkeeper springing around, and I, I had calf problems at the end of my career, with a lot of wear and tear and scar tissue in there. And it's, you just, you know when you make that first movement, when the physio says to you, Ross, you're good. Mm. Your calf's good. You're like, I'm not. And then you go, and then the whole body weight goes through it. So it, it's it's a tricky one, and it plays plays with the mind. Okay, so looking at what... Now, well, that was my medical explanation. All right, no, it's, it's absolutely great and welcomed as well, because we well, need I'm to not... know what the deal is with him. As yes. he looks at, uh, ahead at the programme fixture, I mean, they're not going to rush him back. They haven't really missed him, have they? I mean, getting injured against Norwich is one thing, but they're still sitting pretty at the top of the league. Uh, it's the Champions League is the is the worry, isn't it? Newcastle, Napoli. Chelsea. Chelsea. Uh, yeah, in a way. But, you know, you've brought in Adrian from West Ham, and he's been thrust in there, very experienced. And sometimes you've got to trust your judgement in bringing in a backup goalkeeper. Now, in an ideal world... You know, you'll have uh, Alisson will be fit, but uh, as I say, it's hugely important. And I had this so many times, and I saw it so many times with other players. When you rush back out of desperation to get back in the team, it just generally just sets you back. And then it's like a snowball effect because you're chasing your tail all the time in the fitness, and you end up being out for weeks and weeks and weeks because you didn't wait an extra ten days or whatever it is. And I think Liverpool will be quite about this uh, it's a marathon not a sprint you know the Champions League group stages should be relatively comfortable for them uh, the weaker teams in the Premier League Newcastle being one should be relatively comfortable for them uh, on paper so it, for me it's just making sure he gets if it's another 10 days it's another 10 days if it's another 2 weeks it's another 2 weeks but do not do anything stupid because I've, I've seen it I did it myself so many times, and I saw other players do it, try to rush back, and you almost car crash your half a season. So for a, for a niggling injury, when you've got a backup goalkeeper, it's not worth it. And I'm sure Liverpool, and obviously the physios don't want that to happen either, because mm. they get the big, into the manager's office. You're done. <laughs> you're, uh, <laughs> you're done. So uh, yeah, you've got to get it right. And uh, But he's an important player, but uh, I, I don't think it's a major drama for them. Just to give us your thoughts on where you rate him in the Premier League pecking order of goalkeepers, because the last couple of years it's been David De Gea that all the chat's been around because he's been single-handedly helping Manchester United out at the back with their which deficiencies. I don't, which I don't think... I wouldn't... It, yeah, he wouldn't spring to mind at the moment, David mm -hmm. De Gea. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's out of the Spain team. Right. Uh, he's making mistakes at Man United. He's had contract issues. I think he's, he's wanted to move before. It hasn't happened. But... Definitely, you're just looking at Man City's Ederson and the two Brazilian boys. Mm. Um, obviously, if you're saying, obviously, you know, there's no, I have not seen a goalkeeper with the ability on the ball with his feet that Ederson has. I've just never seen that. Uh, he, Alisson hasn't, he's more, he gets more nervous with the ball at his feet. But is he a better goalkeeper? I think it's a close run thing with him and Ederson, but I think David De Gea is having a pretty inconsistent time at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, they're up there. Uh, I wouldn't like to meet either of them, Alisson or Ederson in the dark alley. A couple of big lads. Premier League, it looks like it's going to be between the two of them. Yeah. Um, which one are you picking for your team from this point on? Let's say he gets fit. Let's say those calves are OK. Yeah, uh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, wow. Part two to come. I'm probably picking him just on the goalkeeping alone, just. But uh, it's a hard one on Ederson. But I'm probably I'm probably picking Allison just yeah. And Stevie Nichols said he said he, he's he's seen him live. He hasn't seen many things live, Stevie. But he's seen he's seen. In fact, he's hardly alive himself. But he's seen Allison and he said he, can't, he just fills the goal, man. Do you know what I mean? He's this he's huge, and there's nothing better. And nothing worse for an opposing player than presence. And nothing better for a set for a defence from set pieces than presence. 
and he is a big old unit. It used to be an underrated position, didn't it? Going way back, it used to be an underrated position, goalkeeper. Maybe not amongst the players, but amongst the fans or amongst the, the you know, the way the, the wages worked and all of that. Yeah, uh, did it? Yeah. I don't really know. Mm. I mean, it's everything else. Unless you're banging 40 goals in the season, nobody really notices you, you know what I mean? It's like the people that are clambering for Van Dijk not to get any awards because Messi and Ronaldo had scored goals. But defending, I always say, defending is a great art. Goalkeeping, probably more so because... I've seen so many goalkeepers crumble under the pressure of making mistakes because you make one mistake, as you know, and it's probably in the back of the net. Mm. During the course of a game, people like us can misplace passes all over the place. Uh, goalkeepers can't do that. And the added pressure is the back... When the, when the back pass law changed in, I think it was the, the mid to late 90s, when you couldn't pass it back to the goalkeeper and they could pick it up, the game changed. The game changed drastically for everybody, but it changed for the goalkeepers. And then this new breed of coach came along and they want the goalkeeper to be a footballer as well, almost like a sweeper, uh, and the ball goes through them. That put an unbelievable amount of pressure on guys. Guys became nervous wrecks. If you were not, if you were a really good goalkeeper, but you were pretty hopeless with the ball at your feet, I'll give you an example, Joe Hart. Mm. Joe Hart's career, and it, coins, and it might have been for other reasons, but... His demise coincided with all this been asked to do more. And the confidence slipped out of his game, I think primarily because they were rolling the ball back to him every 30 seconds and he was making a pig's ear of it. Then it started affecting his decision-making. And so keepers have just been asked to do uh, so much more. And, 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 and I'm quite right, because they don't have to run about like the rest of us. Do you know what I mean? They stand in the goal there and, and, and do nothing for the most part in 90 minutes, particularly if you're playing behind Man City's defence. And then get all the blame. And then got all the blame when it goes. But they're daft. The goalkeepers are just daft. That's why, you know, all the goalkeepers, what they do at school, they want to be footballers when they're at school. They get to a certain age and it's abundantly clear they're not good enough. So as long as they're over a certain height, they throw them a set of gloves and say, get in, goal. That's why they're all mad. There you go, Alison. One of the world's best because of that. <laughs>